Welcome, welcome to Monday's edition, Labor Day version of Online Bible School and also the month of September prayer and fasting service. Amen. And also double up month. Amen. Whatever you're going to give, give double and you'll get 30, 60, and 100 fold back. Good measure. Press down, shaking together and running over. You need a shaking together and running over blessing. Give double this month. It's a special time uh, throughout this whole month. You will enjoy it. So we're going to jump right into the Word. Father, we thank you for the Word. It's a Word that what leads us, guides us in direction, directs us under the inspiration and under the direction inside of us, an unction from the Holy One through your Word. In Jesus' name, Amen. So if you got a Bible right now, we're going to talk about, we've been talking about having uh, increase in every area of life. We've been talking about how to have victory in every area of life. And so the number one thing here today is in James, the first chapter in verse 2, it says here, my brethren, that's talking about sister and two and kids and teenagers this is how you have victory in every area of life. No matter what your surroundings are, it doesn't matter. So, one thing here, it says, my brethren, count. So you have to be able to count. Are you old enough to count yet? One, two, three. Uh, so it says here, my brethren, count it all joy. Woo! Count it all joy. No matter what the surroundings is, no matter what's going on, Count it all joy. Well, how can we count it all joy? We count it all joy because we believe that we receive what we say. Okay? So, how would that work? What would that look like? Well, count it all joy, no matter what the circumstances is. Every day there's different circumstances uh, and there's changes along the way. But to realize... Once you, when you're counting it all joy, what happens is that when you're hanging out with God and fellowshipping with God through Jesus and His Word, you realize something. He's not just the Holy... He's, he's, he causes changes to happen when you count it all joy. He does the changing part. Amen? That's good, isn't it? So, let's go a little bit deeper here. Look over in the very first chapter, we're talking about how can we count it all joy. Well, you do that by the Word of God. When you know what the Word of God says about something, then you can count it all joy. Look in Ephesians, the very first chapter 2. And we've been going through uh, in Christ, the in Christ scriptures uh, this month in particular. And so... Look in verse, we've been going through in Christ, and we just keep right on going. Why? Because when you get super sensitive and you find out who you are in Christ and how to use the in Christ scriptures, hey, you got it. Count it all joy. Okay, so let's look at verse 3. That's Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 3. Blessed be the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, we know He's blessed. Who hath blessed us? Now it's just changed. Now you're blessed. <laughs> See that? How did he bless us? With all spiritual blessings. Now they look at this. The other one was count it all joy when you all. See? Count it all joy. And this here is all spiritual blessings. Where are they at? In heavenly places, right here inside of us, we're the heavenly places now. We're the temple of the Holy Spirit in Christ. Where are they at? When you get a realization, that means a revelation that you can't be talked out of. So you have to start with the intent to never stop who you are in Christ. No matter what happens. It says divers temptations there in James. Well, that temptations is not from God. That's troubles divers different kinds of troubles well you're in the midst of that you still focus on who you are in christ isn't that good so i want to leave that tidbit with you 
and be right back. So the blessing is where? In Christ. So now it's not just automatic. It don't just fall on you like ripe cherries off of a tree. You have a part to play in that. You have to first of all realize that all the blessings of God are in you. Woo! It's like what? 3,000 and something blessings uh, in the Bible. Well, all of them are in you. Why? Because you're in Christ. So all, how'd they get in there? You invited Jesus Christ in. And when you did... He brought the Father. He brought His Word. you got the whole Word of God on the inside of you, but you have to access it. Well, how do you access it? You look up in the Bible, the In Christ Scriptures. Or you can go back and look at all these teachings. A lot of them talk about who you are in Christ. So you can just renew your mind. You still have to renew your mind. See, when you get born again, if you had a big nose, you still got a big nose. If you had a big body, you still got a big body. If you had a little body, you still got a little body. If you had a big ears, you still have big ears. So the outside looks the same, but the inside is different. And then every single time you take the time to get into who you are in Christ, <coughs> it's like getting born again over and over and over again. You ever uh, seen somebody... I did it myself when I was a kid. Every time there was an altar call, especially at special meetings and revivals and stuff like that, we didn't know what special meetings was back then. Um, everything was just a revival. If anything was over two days, it was a revival. We're having revivals. So we go to the revival. And, you know, an evangelist gets you all hyped up. Everybody go down front. Get born again, 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 and 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 again. Finally, it took, you know. <laughs> and uh, so, it really, what happens is they just never did know who they was in Christ. There, there was no teaching. There was a lot of preaching, but there was no teaching. So, the Lord's having us emphasize who you are in Christ. You did Romans 10, 9. You confess Jesus as Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised from the dead. Many of you are even spirit-filled, speaking in the spirit, keeping yourself built up like Jude 1, 20. Build yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. But now, on a, and you do that every day. And the, and the thing is, it's not just reading the Bible, although reading the Bible is a blessing. But it's also taking zeroing in is the Lord directs us in this whole month. He's re re zeroing in on us in prayer, fasting. What does prayer and fasting do? Prayer and fasting just makes you more sensitive to the Spirit of God. See? Because fasting is you're not necessarily going by what your body's screaming to do. You're going by, you're getting more sensitive because you're doing more praying, double up on your praying. Somebody said, oh, I don't have that kind of time. You're talking right now. You could be speaking in the Spirit. <laughs> See, so don't believe the lie you don't have time. Uh, it says, well, I got a job and I have to watch what I'm doing. And Well, you know, unless you're talking, you can be praying. Just, just watch your clock. Watch and pray. Probably a loose interpretation on that, but... Uh, you can't do that. You know, if you prayed a minute, well, you can pray two minutes. You know, if you gave a dollar, you can give two dollars. This is a double up month. And, uh, well, why are you doing that for? Well, we're not. <laughs> the Lord directed this back in 1985 to, to have a time, a set time of prayer and fasting. Now, uh, we're reaching more people now than we ever did it. And it never even dawned on me. Because most of the time, the prayer and fasting service, you know, I'd go out in the woods or in a cabin or even at my home or, and, uh, you know, emphasize different things. One year we emphasized the Holy Spirit, the benefits of speaking in tongues and the Holy Spirit. We emphasize that. Different year, every year is different ones. Well, this year it's three things that we're praying about where we, we learned who we are in Christ, count it all joy. Uh, don't get caught up in the local government or the statewide government or the uh, 
uh, of the United States government or wherever you're from or reaching the world right now, but get caught up and count it all joy. Well, why? Because then you can use your faith effectively. If you're trying to use your faith in worrying, no, get built up, get the worry out of the way, get the fear out of the way, get the anxiety out of the way, use, some, use your faith to get those things out of the way because you can't be in faith in something else at the same time. <laughs> you can't be in faith and worry at the same time. A friend of mine, he made a shirt, and it said, uh, Thou shall not worry. Uh, thou that worries uh, is not in faith. It sounded like a scripture. He made it sound like a scripture. But, you know, that's the truth, though. You can't worry. You can't put your faith in worry. That's just fear, anxiety. You start having those feelings. You just say, no, God is good. We got this. We got it. Whatever it is, you have it. It doesn't matter. Whatever you've released your faith on, you've got it. So look at those scriptures again. I learned how to count. James there, the first chapter. You count it all joy. See, when there's troubles all around you, whatever it is, maybe all around you or just one trouble trying to consume your mind, laugh. What are you laughing at? You're just laughing at how big God is. I seen a t-shirt one time and it had all these different people laughing. And then on the at the bottom it said, and the devil said, God can't do what? And <laughs> it's all these people laughing. Well, that's the same thing. That's the way you have to do. See, God, I sometimes I just say, you know, God's bigger than that. God's bigger than that. And you know what happens? God's bigger than that. And you know what happens? Things just start working. Why? Because God's bigger. See, God is bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then you start thinking about that. What are you doing? You're magnifying God. God's already magnified. But you're magnifying God. See? And when you do that, when you start magnifying God, ha, ha, ha. Count it all joy. I'm in trouble all around you. It don't matter why, because you got this. Whatever it is, you have it. See, so you wouldn't have to be impatient with something. Uh, you don't even have to pray, God, give me patience. No, there, there's no, there's no one in the Bible that says to do that. If you, if you believe that you receive the second you pray, you don't have to be trying to be patient to receive it. Why? Because you believe you receive the second you pray. See, so whatever it is, you just throw up both hands and thank you, Lord, I got it. The enemy would not be trying to get you to do something else. See, he knows you got it. He knows faith works. So you just stay in faith. Amen. And then all the blessings are where? Ephesians, the first chapter there, all the blessings are in Christ. So all the blessings are in you. Why? Because you invited him in. He's not going to bring a bunch of mess. He's just going to bring the blessings with him. <laughs> See, when you find out who you are in Christ and you meditate on who you are in Christ, you listen to these videos, What all it's going to do is build your faith. All it's going to do is build your blessing <clears throat> to where you can use it greater, where you can wear it, drive it, you know, whatever. Now, don't get hung up on the blessing. Get hung up in who you are in Christ. How'd you get that blessing? Well, you got it through knowing who you are in Christ and sowing. See, so don't let, the, don't let those things, you know, keep going with who you are in Christ. Oh, yeah, I know who I am in Christ. Yeah, that's good. Let me change the subject. No, you never outgrow who you are in Christ. You grow in who you are in Christ. Let me say it again. You never outgrow who you are in Christ. That's how you grow is staying in Christ. In Christ Jesus. See, so when the blessings start coming, don't get hung up on the blessings. See, it's, I had a, a friend, he got blessed with a, a, a brand new uh, pickup. And, <clears throat> and then we didn't see him for a long time. And we didn't hear from him or anything. I used to hear from him on a monthly and weekly basis. Didn't hear from him. And he texted me. He said, uh, 
well I'm out enjoying my new my new truck see and I, and and then before you know it he almost lost his new truck well why because he was honoring his new truck instead of honoring God no always key how do you honor God well you honor God by finding out who you are in Christ and how to use who you are in Christ by saying and speaking and also you honor God by honoring God first when you honor God first the blessings just start working why because you're staying connected with the Word of God so you don't get chinchy you know what chinchy means I was going through Mexico with Earl Kellum, which was, he was a missionary there for over 40 years. I mean, I love being around him. He could, he just being around him, he was real soft-spoken, but just being around him, and we had groups come down there and minister and stuff, and I told them, I said, I told, the, I told their leader, I was just part of the group and with, with Earl Kellum, but there was other groups that would come we were staying in his house and he said uh, I, I told him I said when he says something when he starts talking at the dinner table the other people need to get quiet because he's going to say something good he's going to say something and if everybody's talking he's going to say it but they're going to miss it so see when you when you know who you are in Christ you calm it down why because when he says something, you know it's going to be good. <laughs> See? <laughs> See, people get all hung up. Oh, I know that. I know this. I know that. I know that. That's actually not a good attitude to receive. Every single second of every single day, when you listen to who you are in Christ, you got to watch it because the enemy will try to do stuff. Oh, you know that. You've heard that. You know this. You don't got to do that. No, you've done that before. But to see who you are in Christ scriptures is it don't work that way. See, people's under attack and don't even know it. They get hung up in the blessing instead of who you are, how'd you get the blessing by knowing who you are in Christ. See, so when you know who you are in Christ, you honor God and let everything calm down. And then also double up, double up, double up. This is a month of double up. If you prayed a minute, pray two. If you fasted one meal, you know, uh, fast a meal and a half, you know, or if you fast one snack, fast two snacks, whatever it is, you know, don't be crazy on yourself, but just be tune in more. You read one verse or meditate one verse, meditate two verses. You watch one video, watch two videos. But why? All it's going to do is strengthen your faith. That's all it's going to do, strengthen your faith. And you get your faith strengthened in what? In who you are in Christ. That's where all the blessings are at. Amen. So count it all joy. Do more who you are in Christ a little bit more. And double up. Amen. Double up, double up, double up. You'll be glad you did. You have a great one. You have a good one. And uh, we're enjoying the weather September is one of my favorite months. Of course, the prayer and fasting time. And also in Oklahoma, the weather is very mild and very good. So you have a great one. You have a good one. I'll see you tomorrow. You are in Christ Jesus. And do a double. Amen. Make it a double.